Hello everybody, it's Christine Chandler coming to you live from home once again. And I just fumbled my glasses. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So, yes, we have been busy around here. We've been clearing out lots and lots of boxes. So I should go ahead and do them since we moved back here. Yeah. Christmas, uh, no, New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve today. Today. To the following day. Yeah. In 2014, which, turned to, which then turned to 2015. Anyway, among which I found a book that I have been curious about for a little for a little while, for a while, because I never actually got I actually never read it, and I'm going to start reading it in a series. So pretty much, uh, a girl who brought down the world who survived a house fire. Boo! You know, the one that the author had actually sent me, the proof copy. Uh, so anyway, I have been curious, so I'm going to start reading it now. In the videos, in the other video series. So, okay. And this is on my own personal merit. Nobody has paid me or asked me to do this. Okay, chapter one, Neighbors. Uh, hello? My name is Kid. I'm just a cute girl. At least, that's what everyone tells me. I don't have many friends in the city I live in. My parents moved here because Dad got a new job. I mean, it's only been two hours and I'm already lonely. Kid! Kid, come on down. It's time for dinner, called Mimi, Kid's mom, from down the stairs. School doesn't start until August, so until then, I guess I'm going to be sad, huh? Oh well, at least Sis is around to keep me company. Kid writes in her diary. Coming! What's this? asked Kid. It's some frozen lasagna that Dad brought home from work, Mimi replied. What's in it? Stuff that'll kill you like soya lichen. Ha! <laughs> Grabbed Vivian, Kid's older sister. Hey, I don't want to die. Relax, kid. Vivian, apologize. Vivian, apologize. Demanded. Oh, I used the wrong voice. Demanded Miles, the father. Fine, don't worry, kid. The stuff won't kill you unless it was made in China. This was made from Panda. Enough, kid. Just eat. It's good. Miles responded as he finished off his plate. I guess I never finished explaining everyone in my family, did I? My dad's name is Miles. He worked in the nanotechnology. He got his fa this fancy job in the city, and he gets paid a lot of money. He promised to throw a great birthday party with all the new friends I'll make. But I don't think I'll ever get to fit in this place. I mean, I just tried talking to the neighbor, and he was really evil. Hmm. Sis, we should get ourselves acquainted with the neighbors. I have a feeling we'll be able to find friends for you. Let's play Vivian. But Viv, I've so, all I've seen are adults in suits. I haven't seen a single kid around here my age. Don't worry. I'm sure they're all hiding in their houses because of the city's murder rate shooting up 7%. Vivian, stop scaring me. Then I told you to stop. Well, I, I'm sort of not making this up. Read this. On the list of sea figures, murder rates, murder rate was listed as increasing by seven percent from 102 to 109. Viv, I don't like this place. Come on, I mean, we're not living in the slums where the homeless can get us. Besides, I'm too ugly to be raped. What's raped? Nothing. Come on, let's meet our new neighbors. The two approached the door. Kid looked as cute as she described herself. Vivian had not brushed her hair. As the door opened, their house stops as a large, smelling man greeted them. Vivian hesitated. Yo, my name's Vivian. This is my sister, Kid. We're going to be your new neighbors from now on. Kid, say something. S something. Hmm. Hello, my name is Christopher Vinifier Vega. But you can call me Christopher or Chris or Short. Vivian replied, 
So, you got any gets? Something around her age? She'd like some new friends? Oh, uh, wait. Ugh. I would like to have a daughter of my own one day. I hope she might look just as cute as your sister, but not like you, Vivian. What? What's that supposed to mean? I'm saying I hope my... I'm saying I hope my future daughter does not look like you. Vivian stared at him speechless. She could not think of anything to say to respond to such a blunt statement. I know I'm cute. Thank you, mister. Sweet old kid. Would you dare like to come in? What the fuck asked. Sure, exclaimed kid. Kid waltzed in there on in while Vivian, still speechless, followed her. At the entrance stood a few pictures of Kutaba and a beautiful woman, one of them being a crudely drawn picture done with crayon. Well, Kut, are you a garbage man? asked Vivian. No, I'm unemployed at the moment. The living room was full of empty pizza boxes, empty soda bottles, with the front of the TV being the only part seemingly clear of any garbage. In contrast, the small kitchen looked like it had not been touched in ages. My sisters were lucky they kept their shoes on as they waited to what looked like a couch. Oh, you shouldn't sit there! Got the bar on. That's just garbage! <laughs> they waited to what was actually a couch and sat down. There was a squishy noise as the two sat down on it. Davy decided to crack a crude joke while Kia complained that she was getting scared. Oh, there's nothing to be afraid of. Although, there is something on my mind. Hey, quit! What was up with all those pictures? Is that your wife? Vivian asked. Uh, no, she used to be a friend of mine until some jerks tore us apart. Chris angrily muttered. Oh, what happened? You would like to know. Of course, I'm intrigued. Well, it all happened when I was sitting at the front of Wainsworth Enterprises. I was looking for a girlfriend to make it to the perfect wife when a cop decided to have me move aside because I was attracting unwarranted attention, he mimicked. Then I punched him in the face and I had to spend a day in jail because they enjoy kicking me around. Uh, wow, man. But that didn't answer my question about the girl, though. Oh, her name was Belle. We used to be great friends. She worked for Wainsworth Enterprises, so we both shared an interest in playing rocket flingers. Huh, there's a pun there. I was setting up my rocket flingers one day in front of the company, and it turns out that she had her own set of rocket flingers to do with mine. I remember the first time we do it. I had my nuclear spider attack her rhino rocket for 70 points of damage. It was a critical slam attack. She told me to meet her at... Game Wars every Friday for a weekly tournament. I felt my heart rise every time I went to a tournament. Each time she won, I tried to hug her, but she pushed me away. She said she couldn't be arrested. I asked why, and she only said that, was, that it is a law. Only after I attempted to kiss her once did a cop show up and tear us apart. That was not the end of my friendship, though. Those jerks thought they could stop me in there from experiencing the true love I felt. I remember once I held her hand and it was the greatest moment of my life. She was crying on my shoulder and I will never forget that moment. I felt the emotional connection between us had reached a new level. It was going smoothly between us until those jerks showed up again. I remember being given a folder and told to never come to Game Wars ever again. I tried to fight those cops, but they just beat me and kicked me. I tried once to get into Game Wars for old time's sake, but those cops beat me again. I was so angry that I have not stepped outside my house since, except for when I get hungry. Holy shit, this guy is insane, thought Vivian. Oh, I'm thirsty. Do you have me anything to drink, kid ass, breaking the awkward silence? Yes, I have my own brand of soda. Hold on. Christopher shrugged, said as he struggled to reach the top of the food. As he had the drink to kid, Vivian slapped it by the hand. I forgot. I had brought water. Right? Vivian explained as she whispered. Kid, never accept 
many things that this guy gives you. Give her! Why? She whispered back. We've been struggled to come up with an answer that would not expose Kid to the horrors of the Wirra. Kid, it's time you learn the poop about Kutaba. He's really Santa Claus's evil brother. He's trying to trick you into getting down to his night list. So I'll never accept anything from him, or you will make Santa sad. Sheesh, that's a cruel bad lie. Oh, I am not want that hamster doll for Christmas. Thanks, sis. So I'll make sure I never accept anything from evil Santa Claus. You hear me, evil Santa? Well, never trick me! Get the cream. But the bar had only been staring off at his ceiling ever since Vivian smacked the drink out of his hands. He had just been sitting patiently, just watching the two whisper the entire time. Uh, my name is not Santa, he replied. It's Kutaba Winterfield Vega, but you call me Kutaba, or Quit. Uh, and yet, never bring up anything related to Christmas to him ever again. You might get suspicious to put you on the nihilist anyway. Vivian hastily explained. Oh, okay. I can see the evil in him. He really is fat enough to be Santa's evil brother. Vivian sighed for a breath of relief. However, the two still needed to make it out of the, his front door alive. Uh, I do not see the water that you said you had, Vivian, Christopher mumbled. Well, that's fine enough to him. Come on, kid, let's go home. My sister told me never to go over there ever again, she said. He was about as bad as our old Chinese neighbors. And I always liked him. They shouted funny words. My mom's name is Mimi. When she was younger, she used to have dreams about being a famous actress, but was crushed when they told her she wasn't pretty enough. I still think she's pretty. I tell her every day. Hi, Mom. Me and sis were just talking with evil Santa Claus. Don't worry, I'm not going to be on the naughty list. Also, you look pretty today. All right, kid. Vivian, we need to talk. The two sat as Vivian attempted to explain the situation. Hmm. Um, which is why we should move again. I do not want to live next to a maniac who will potentially go around me. Vivian! You always go around saying our neighbors are terrible people. This is why you need to learn people skills. Yeah, that'll get you in places in life. Just like that acting premiere, am I? I will speak to Christopher first thing in the morning. Mom always replies that one day she will make it big, but is happy being my mom. My sister's name is Vivian. She goes to high school and gets in trouble a lot. I still really like her. I'm glad she's my sister. One time I accidentally broke the family vase and she took the blame for me. But just now she warned me about evil Santa. Mom says that she's going to invite him for dinner tomorrow. Oh, hello, my name is Mimi, the mother of Kid and Vivian. I apologize for any hassle they may have brought to you, Gustavo. You are very pretty. What race are you, Gustavo? Oh, well, many people mistake me for German, but I'm actually part Italian and part African. Gustavo shuddered as soon as she finished her sentence. Is something wrong, Christopher? Nothing. If you were different, you would fit in my standards. What do you mean? You see, I have been struggling. Christopher went on to explain his crisis to Mimi. Oh, Christopher, one day you will find that special someone just like I did. Say, would you like to come over for dinner, say, around seven? It has been a long time since anyone has asked me to do anything. Okay, thank you, Mimi. I will show up at seven. But it's okay, because Vivian says she will protect me with her life. She is so nice. Anyway, that about wraps it up for everyone in my family. Oh, how could I have forgotten Mittens, our cat? We all brought her all the way to the city, and she just seems to fit in fine. I can't see her at any door right at my door right now. It's all the time I have today. Tomorrow, maybe I'll talk about how that dinner went. I hope he doesn't come. Love, kid. Okay, well, huh. 2008, this book was written. Huh. Well, tune in next time for when I read chapter two.
um, still mixed feelings about it in regards, aside from the parodies and if this is supposed to be a comedy, as it says in the bottom left-hand corner on the back, mm, it doesn't sound so funny to me. Okay, there you go. Have a good day.